person is not a stranger. I think if we were going to say we have cousins at this house, I, I think we would say Elder Damon Green is one of our cousins. He is an elder at Greater Mount Calvary Holy Church. He is involved in the ministerial alliance and the family ministry. He is a lover of prayer, and he is he has a wife. And of course, he has a wife. I apologize. He has three children with his lovely wife, Elder Nicole Green. Sorry about that, Elder David. And he's he going to come to. <laughs> I will apologize to Elder Nicole in a minute, um, but he's going to come to us in his own special way. Again, he is definitely one of our cousins. He is with us, and we appreciate every time he joins us. So please receive the ministry gifts of Elder Damon Green. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and God bless you, House of Healing. It's good to be with you, as always. And, yes, and you guys are more than family. It's, you know, just an extension of the family of God that we are in together. We, I thank God for the opportunity to be here. Um, I am humbled that he asked me to present tonight. Um, and I will try to be succinct and get out of your way quickly. Um, and so let's just pray one more second um, for this word. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this time. Now, Father, I ask that you open up our hearts and minds and help us to hear what you are saying and help us to uh, gain, Father, from your word and from your inspiration and from your revelation. Help us, Father, to move forward, ever forward and never backwards. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So the last part of my prayer was exactly... Uh, what I am assigned to speak about. Um, so I am coming from the standpoint of of pushing out of the past and embracing the future, or embracing the newness of our lives. You know, it's a new year, um, and it has, it is customary, I should say, that when the new year comes in, there are a lot of uh, 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 new things that we get involved in. Uh, there are new uh, goals that we are set. We tend to turn over new leaves when the new year comes in um, and uh, do a reset, if you will. And, you know, we we fast uh, to start the new year off right. We pray. Um, some of us still um, set these goals, these expectations that we may have. Um, whether you do them or not, we still set them. Uh, we still set them. Um, all of these things, just, there is a, an announcement of, uh, of the newness of the, of the year. New year, new things, almost as if we're just starting over, starting over again, another chance. I want to speak more to not the thought of the starting over, but progressing forward from where we are. Wherever you, at, at whatever state or whatever condition you, and in, in whatever condition you enter this year in, what I want to discuss is moving forward from that state, moving forward from that condition moving ahead of wherever you landed at the end of the year. doesn't matter what the year brought to you, what 2021 brought to you. doesn't matter what has happened in your past, even beyond 2021. doesn't matter what those things were when you try to make headway and just to keep moving, keep going forward. I... I, I I um um some years ago when I was doing my internship I lived in a, a town um in York Pennsylvania that's where I did my internship and um I joined the church there and then and I might talk about that a little more later but I was there for a time and then it was time to go and one of the ministers um said something to me she said, uh, moving forward, ever forward, and never backward. And that just stuck to me 
and it's sort of been like this overall umbrella that I have been living under um, since that time, just moving forward and never backward. Um, sometimes moving forward can seem like a step backward, but even sometimes our step backwards is an act of moving ahead, um, especially when it involves the Lord uh, doing what he desires to do. So I want to go forward and and try to leave you with some keys to help in moving forward. Um, just some keys, some thoughts that I have that could help you uh, adjust to your current condition and take a step forward and then progressively continue moving forward. Amen? Amen. Okay, so the first key that I want to start off with is desire. Number one, desire. Um, I'm going to turn to Exodus chapter 6, verse 6. Exodus chapter 6, verse 6. And I'm reading the English Standard Version, and it reads like this. It says, this is uh, the Lord talking to Moses. And he says, Say therefore to the people of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from slavery to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. Verse 7, I will take you to be my people, and I will be your God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God who has brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. 8, I will bring you into the land that I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will give to you for you possession. I am the Lord. Moses spoke thus to the people of Israel, but they did not listen to Moses because of their broken spirit and harsh slavery. So I'm going to repeat that last part again. This is verse 9. Moses spoke thus to the people of Israel, but they did not listen to Moses because of their broken spirit and harsh slavery. So now, reality will will suggest to us, reality tells us that often we enter into these new years with these, with these uh, 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 new um, themes for the year um, or these announcements and, and so on and so forth. And, and, and the truth of the matter is that there are some people who will receive it and they will take it up and they will run with it and there were some there will be some people who will who who will not be so trusting or believing and and um and may not receive it as well for whatever reason they may have in this case when Moses had come to them to say to them that the Lord is here now to answer your prayer to open a door to your freedom but they could not receive it they 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 would not hear it because they were so broken and uh the harshness of slavery has 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 taken their expectation of anything good happening and some and, and and one may say whatever your past was whatever the last year brought or whatever the prior years have brought whatever you grew up with whatever you've dealt with some of some sometimes they they wear you out such that you may not have any expectations of any good ahead of you. You may have difficulty seeing a way forward. You don't have a desire to even move from that state because it may not have gotten you anywhere. So what I'm saying it to you is to check your level of desire, your, your desire to even want to move ahead. And if there is no uh, sense of wanting to move ahead, wanting to go forward. 
if, if there is no desire to move, then you have now something that you need to actually work with or work on, whether it be of exhaustion, whether it be of pessimism, whether somebody has spoken something to you that was negative and that might be still whirling around in your head, whatever the case may be, check your level of desire, your want to, your even need to move on, to move forward, to go ahead. Such things come to us when the Lord asks us or when the Lord is presenting to us options to go forward. Now, there is no reason for God to tell you to go ahead unless there was something to go ahead to. So you can bet, you can believe rather, that if, if the Lord has encouraged you in any kind of way through the words of the prophet or your pastor uh, through a desire in your heart, if he has put any kind of indication in you that going forward is the way to go, moving ahead is the way to go, then you have to then then you should believe that he has something for you to move forward to, or at least the promise of something to move forward to. If your desire to move forward has waxed and waned and has decreased over time because of the hardship of your past, because of the, the exhaustion that you, that you experienced over the last year, then I would submit to you that you need to take a look at your desire and figure out why is it that I don't want to go on. And that at least will give you a starting point. It would be one thing to, to note that I have no desire to move from here and just leave it at that. I have desire to have no desire to move on from here. You know, a lot of us get comfortable, and comfort is okay. Comfort is good. Uh, but comfort is meant to be comfort uh, um, as a benefit, but not as a trap. Comfort is not meant to entrap you where you are. Comfort is a benefit that you get from being where you are, but it is not meant to entrap you. And sometimes comfort comes as a way uh, to make uh, harsh times or difficult times more bearable. You might find in these, when in difficult times, uh, moments where you do have uh, some comfort or whatever. It's never meant for you to remain in a place of comfortability such that that comfort keeps you from progressing to something greater or something better. So check your level, level of desire, your, 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 your ability to want to go ahead. Take a look at it, and if you see that it's questionable, if it's not there, then work on it. Make it a focus and that in and of itself becomes a step forward for you. That, that looking at what you are, where you are, the reality of what you are dealing with, the lack of desire to move forward becomes, can become for you a step once you look at it, address it. It could become a step in moving forward. Next, I want to go uh, uh, to this. Um, I want to move ahead to my uh, next, uh, or number two, I should say, uh, key for moving forward. I want to um, use for a scripture, Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14. It's a familiar scripture. But before I get there to read it, I'm just going to tell you the step. This key I want to uh, leave with you is forgetting, forgetting. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14 says, see here, chapter 3, verse 13 to 14, it says, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, 
forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So I'm going to use that passage of Scripture for my next two points. Uh, so number two, as I said, is, is uh, forgetting, forgetting. Um, I also want to read that in a different version. This is uh, the Passion Translation, and it reads like this. It says, I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing, but I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose of which Christ Jesus laid hold of me to make me his own. Verse 13 says, I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. Verse 14, I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize. Again, number two is forgetting. So forgetting, you might need a little help forgetting. So things happen in our lives and the image of it or the feeling of it, the thought of it, it just doesn't simply go away. Sometimes it's just there. And if and and forgetting just doesn't happen just because somebody tells you to forget, you know the tr- that's that's the truth. It doesn't just go away just because someone is just telling you you need to forget about it. Some things take some work to do. Um, some of us feel like sometimes that if we just ignore a thing, that it would go away. Ignoring something is not quite the same as forgetting it. When you ignore something, it um, it still has it still has a presence. It's still there. You, you're just not giving it any attention. It's it's it gets still there. Forgetting has the air of not being there anymore. And I think in that sense, forgetting becomes a more powerful tool to moving forward than just ignoring a thing. Ignoring something can help. It can be helpful. But forgetting could be uh, even more so, I believe. So now, we know that things may not just leave your mind. What you want to do is get to a place where even if it hasn't left your mind, there's some image, some memory of it. We want to get to a point where it does not control your every decision. Um, your past is your past. It is what it is. It has affected you however it has affected you. And forgetting in this sense does not necessarily mean that it has gone away or makes it go away. It just, the the state that you want to arrive at is that the the past is where it is, and I may be able to access it still through my image of it or the feeling that it left or the result that it left, but it doesn't control you. It doesn't control the decisions that you make. You can reference it, reference what happened in the past in order to make a decision, but the past should not control every decision that you make. So in this case, forgetting becomes very important. Um, Sometimes uh, we may get to a place where we will easily say to ourselves, well, the past is really in the past, and it it doesn't have me anymore. And, 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 And that would be great. That's good. That's good. It shouldn't have you. Sometimes the problem is is not that the past has you. Sometimes it's that you have the past. You are holding on to the past. The past is not entra- has not entrapped you, holding you hostage to it. Sometimes it's you holding on to it and maybe being unwilling to let it go. 
Um, again, no, another one of these situations where I might tell you just forget it, and it's, it doesn't, and it's not as simple as just poof, it goes away, not pushing the button and it goes away. These are things that you have to, you may have to work through. For some people, you might be able to just, you know, forget and move on, and God bless you for that. But I, I, I am acknowledging that there are some things that that may take a little time to work through, but nevertheless, it needs to be acknowledged. It needs to be worked through. Now, that might mean you may need some help in forgetting, and, and it's okay to have counseling. It's okay to have uh, someone help walk you through that in an elf, in the effort to get past it. Some things may take just confronting it. Um, of course, that takes some courage, but you take the courage and you face it, you deal with it so that you can get past it. You can never get past the thing if you don't walk in front of it at first. You, you never get through something without first walking or, or standing in front of it first, confronting it. You, you don't walk past or get through a thing without first being face-to-face -face with the thing. So, again, because if, if that is the case, then you could simply ignore it and it wouldn't be a problem anymore. But what I'm speaking of is the things that you cannot ignore, that you won't ignore, or you've been ignoring it and you've been ignoring it for a long time, but it's still present. Now it's time to face it. Now it's time to deal with it. And whether you manage this by yourself uh, or you manage it with the help of someone else, with counseling, um, however you decide you want counsel, whether it be, be pastoral counseling, you talk through your pastor or a friend or a professional, um, um, professional therapist, however you decide, it just has to be faced. It has to be confronted. It has to be uh, dealt with so that you could let it go, so that it can be forgotten. And, and there is no time limit or given time that forgetting should take place. Like, you know, you, the expectation that it's going to go away just because you turn and face it today, that'll mean it's gone tomorrow, you're over it. Uh, some people may may have that, but that may not. That's, just, that's not the case for everybody. Sometimes it may take months. Sometimes it may take years. But in the spirit of what we are talking about, moving forward and embracing the newness of life, embracing a future, however you begin it only matters that you begin. It only matters that you start. You cannot uh, move ahead without uh, without facing. It's, it just it, facing it. It just it just it only matters that you start, because the start of it will be a step forward. So forgetting a thing, as the scripture says, forgetting the past or forgetting what's been behind me forgetting what has happened already. Whatever your results were, whatever um, you accomplished or did not accomplish, whatever occurred to you, whatever happened to you or around you, forgetting what lies behind you. That is a step in moving forward. Amen? That's my number two. So I'm going to move to number three. Using that same scripture, the next part of it says, "Press, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call. So my next point, my next key is the press. The press. Pressing. Pressing running straight ahead, pressing forward. So now you might forget. I mean, you accomplished the forgetting, but another 
key for moving forward is pressing. What I'm saying is you have to have some kind of uh, grit, some kind of grind, some kind of push. You look at the definition of grit, and um, and it, it is described as courage or resolve or even strength of character, a, 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 a press. Um, and when you use courage, courage, uh, in a way of um, as a description of the kind of press that you must have, you think of courage not in the form of uh, being strong or being or, or having a lot of strength. You in in this case, you think of courage from the standpoint of not letting go too easily, not being so easily. Um, separated from the thing that you're trying to accomplish, courage, and um, and, and and I'm sorry, courage and strength from the sense of um, not easily worn away. That means that you have to have some kind of resilience. You know, if you're going to have a press, if you're going to have um, a persistence. Um, something that keeps you going and keeps you going forward with strength. That's what I mean. A press, something that keeps you going and keeps you going with strength. A grit, and from the sense that you don't let go very easily, you're not so easily separated. You know, the devil comes to to separate you from your faith. The devil comes to separate you from what you believe and for what you're hanging on to with with Jesus, but the Lord prayed for us that we will not faint in this walk, so we are not easily separated from our faith. He has prayed that we have a press, that we have a grit. So look at your your ability to press. This requires some resilience, this uh, ability, uh, ability to come back, to bounce back, because certainly um, – in this new year, or even in any effort to move ahead, any effort to move forward, any, you, you will run into obstacles. You will run into difficulty. You will run into complex situations. And if the first time you run into something that is difficult, you fold up and fall and never get back up, then, then that's not moving forward at all. You have to have an ability to come back, an ability to get back up. And, and that ability to come back, to get back up, um, lies in your relationship with the Lord, the strength of the Holy Spirit within you. It's not your own strength. It is the strength that the Lord affords you because he knows what he wants and what he has for you and what he wants you to accomplish and achieving what he has for you. And in, in this verse that I, I use, Philippians chapter 3, um, verse 13, um, where it says in this Passion Version, it says, I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget the past and I run toward the future. I hasten toward the future. It says, I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. It is not expected that you would depend on your own strength. Our own strength is helpful. You build up your strength, your ability, your, um, um, your capacity to do things. And you can build it up several ways. Um, you know, when we think physically, we think about exercise. But when I'm talking about your capacity to do things, to get back up, you know, you've had challenges in your life, you learned some things, you even taught some things to some people, you, 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 your capacity has grown. And that's great. But the Lord is the one that gives us this, this, this ability to get back up. And if you are not strengthening your walk with him, then your ability to bounce back, from what the devil throws at you and from what life hands you uh, will be diminished. So in the effort to have this press to go forward, you must look at your relationship with the Lord, strengthen your, your walk with the Lord, 
strengthen your resolve with the Lord, strengthen your um, your faith in the Lord. And we know what to do. We know how to do that. We spend time with Him. We we study Him even further. We increase our faith in our in our uh, uh, ability to hear Him. We we get quiet and we hear the we, all these all these things. We separate ourselves from the things that make Him. Uh, more difficult to hear. We separate ourselves from the noise, from the interference. Um, we separate ourselves routinely to reset ourselves so we can hear him, so we can feel him, so we can we just we spend time with him to be restored, rejuvenated. That's that's your your um, that's where your resilience comes from. Um, your your uh, ability to lock into the Lord and let him not only preserve you, but let him restore you and build you up. So you need a press. Your press can be worn out from life. But what restores that press is time in God's face, time with the Lord, rejuvenation by the Holy Spirit, uh, he builds up the grit. The, he builds up the courage. He does all of these things. The resilience that he leaves you with is a resilience that uh, the world can't take away. It's a resilience that is confounding to the world. Again, the Lord taking the foolish things to confound the wise. You'll come back from some things that people will never expect you to come back from. You'll you'll persist and you'll last in ways that people wouldn't expect you to remain. The Lord keeps you. You will you will be the person that said, "My foot well nigh slipped," but the Lord kept you. You will be the person that says, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, you would have been overcome by the flood waters, but the Lord is on your side. But you won't have a sense of that if you don't have time with him. And if you don't have time with him, the world and the changes of this world, the issues of this life will wear you down and you will have a difficult time seeing or embracing the newness of the life ahead of you. So you want to look at your ability to press, and you want to ensure that you have a press, and the way to do that is to have time with the Lord. One other thing that pressing requires, it requires managing your energy. So now we are, we are often talking about or told to uh, manage our time, time management, scheduling things so that we get to everything that needs to be gotten to, that we do everything that needs to be done, that we cover everything that is on our schedule. Um, but managing that time, managing that schedule becomes very difficult if you don't have energy to do what is required and keeping that schedule, managing that time. So it becomes more important to manage your energy. If tomorrow the step forward that you need to take is to register for classes because you're going back to school, and if you stay up all night, you are exhausted so that you don't get up at an early enough time to fit that in your schedule, then and other things become prominent, then you 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 begin to set out to do the task of the day, but because you are exhausted, you don't do. Uh, a, a good enough job in meeting those tasks, you become forgetful because you're tired. Um, you feel overwhelmed because you have many things to do because you're tired. So you have to manage your energy. 
because managing your energy um, will help you maintain the schedule that you plan for yourself. It will help you maintain the press. You can't push a thing if you don't have the energy to push it. You can't push yourself if you don't have the strength or the energy to do it. So, so sometimes you need to manage your energy and not be involved in all the things that sap your energy, not be involved, not be involved in every single thing that comes to sap your energy, um, and not over-cluttering your schedule so that you are exhausted every day at the end of the day because you've done so much. Managing your energy requires some thought and requires some physical rest. Okay. So moving on to my next key, number four, is trust. So trust is a key to moving forward because there are some things that are ridiculous in your mind that God will say and will lead you to go. And the story of um, um, involving um, Abraham's servant going to find a wife for Abraham in uh, Genesis chapter 24 and verse 27. In verse 27, the servant mentions that it was the Lord who led him while he was in the way, who led him while he was in the way. The reason why he was able to be led was because he trusted that God will do what not only he promised what he promised Abraham, but will do for him what he needed to accomplish. He trusted that while he was on the way, that the Lord would take him where he needed to go. Of course, that requires that you have to get in the way. So when you move ahead, when you take a step ahead, you move forward, you, you find out that the Lord will lead you along that way. But if you don't get in the way, then, then you won't necessarily see God move. You won't be able to see God move. But you have to trust that he's doing that, that he's doing that for you. Trust is a very simple word, but it does take some effort. And sometimes you have to trust him even if you don't feel it, if you don't feel like it. You're saying, I trust him, but you don't feel it. But you keep saying it until it becomes reality. And the more he, he proves himself, the more he comes through, the more your trust will build, be built up. But you have to get in the way. You have to take the step first and allow God to show you that you can trust him. Okay. My last point is obedience. So that is tied to my, my previous point, trust, but obedience. Obedience is something uh, that everyone that accomplished anything that we read about in the Bible, even your own self, I can tell you stories about my own life, that if you do not obey, if you do not obey, then you, if you don't obey what the Lord has shown you, given you, caused you to feel, let you in any kind of way, then you will not be able to see the life that you're trying to attain. If Moses did not go back to Egypt then, and did not perform the way that God asked him to perform, then the whole, the whole exodus would not have been facilitated. And the primary example we have is Jesus. If Jesus did not go to the cross, even when he was faced with the time, when he was asking the Lord, asking the Lord, is there another way to do this? And he made the decision, not my will, but yours be done, and he kept going. He kept going, and he did what he did. If he had not obeyed God the Father, then there would have been no salvation for us, for the world. There is a life ahead for you. There is... There is a life in, in, uh, in your future. There is a step forward that will help you attain all that God has for you. But if you don't obey what the Lord says to do, whatever the instruction is, even if the instruction is to be still a moment, if you don't obey the instruction, then you will not be able to move forward in the way that gets you what God truly has for you. Obedience, obedience to God, it facilitates progression in God. This is my last point. Obedience to God facilitates progression in God. So here are my keys, just as a review. 
your desire, check your level, forgetting, forget the past, even if you need help to do it. Three, press, manage your energy so you have the ability to press. Number four, trust, trust that God will lead you as you get along their way. Take the step and move ahead. And number five, obedience, your obedience will facilitate your progression and attainment of the life that God has for you. This forward motion, momentum, moving ever forward and never backwards. Amen? Amen. That's all I have for you. Thank you guys for having me. And Thank you, Elder Green. It's always a pleasure hearing you, sir. And I piggyback on Elder DG. You are family, so I would also say thanks, cuz. Appreciate it. <laughs> we thank God. <laughs> we thank God for you, sir. We thank God for you and your wonderful family. Um, we just um, ask that God continually grace you and protect you and your family as you go out about his business. Thank, thank you, you so much thank again. You. So just before we close in prayer, I wanted to um, – reiterate the announcements just in case there was someone who got on and did not was not able to hear them in the beginning. Um, this coming Wednesday is HOHDMB Day, and we will have 6 a.m. prayer. And then following that, this coming Friday at 7.30 p.m. will be our kickoff for our Fresh Wind Revival with Dr. T. Cedric Brown, and Brother Josh Copeland from BET Sunday Best. On January the 26th, we will do our virtual book reading, Unqualified, Stephen Furtick. And then on next Monday, our very own Pastor Jay will be teaching on Divine Connections at 7 p.m. So please govern yourselves accordingly and let us pray. Father, we thank you and we give your name glory. We give your name honor. We thank you so much for all that you've given out to us throughout your elder Damon Green. We ask right now, O oh God, that everything that was given to us help us, O oh God, to follow through, O oh God. Help us with our desire and help us to forget, O oh God. Help us with every key point, O oh God. We ask right now that you move mightily through what we received on this evening, O oh God, that you have your way and that you give us, O oh God, what we need to be obedient and what we need to follow through and move forward in the name of Jesus. We ask that you bless uh, Elder Green and his family, O oh God. Father, watch over them, protect them, give back to him, O oh God, all that he has given out, O oh God. Lord God, we ask that you not let a bill come due that they cannot meet. Bless their home, God. Bless his children. Bless his wife. Bless his job. Bless, O oh God, his finances. Bless their health. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for them, and we ask right now that you continually watch over them and keep them. We also lift up Elder Deidre to you, O oh God. We thank you for her faithfulness. On we thank you for her prayer, O oh God. We ask that you bless her and her family, O oh God. Keep them, O oh God, like never before. Watch over them and protect them as well. Father, we thank you on this evening for all that you have done, and we ask as we continue through consecration this week that you give us the strength to do what we are called to do and what we are asked to do from our pastors. Lord God, we ask that you give us the strength to continue to concentrate from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., O oh God. Lord, lift up our pa we lift up our pastors to you, Pastor Jay and Co-Pastor Keith. Continue to watch over them and keep them. Continue to help them, O oh God, and strengthen them as they go about your work and your business, O oh God. Father, we love you and we give your name all the praise and all the glory. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, and God bless everyone. Have a blessed night.